G'day guys, it's uh, Dr. James Simcock here, just uh, from Vet Dojo. I'm just going to go through some pre and post-op x-rays of a lateral condyle fracture that we just repaired. Um, that video is on our membership channel, so if you want to check out the surgical video, um, then please feel free to jump onto the um, live stream section and, and have a look at that. Um, so this is the pre-op AP radiograph that we had, and we can see here we've got the humerus, um, radius ulna. We can see quite clearly the disruption here with the lateral condyle. Um, reasonably displaced and um, kind of really just going laterally a little bit medially. Um, important to look for any evidence of any fissures or fragments in this um, medial epicondyle and that all looks pretty good. Um, so the repair that we did, we actually did this as an open repair. So I would typically do these with fluoros uh, fluoroscopic assistance, but um, we didn't have the um, fluoroscope down at our Mornington Hospital to be able to do that. So what we're looking at here is um, Let's try and change the resolution on that a little bit so I can see it better. Um, is the, let's see if I can adjust this a bit for you, um, is the lateral post op radiograph. And I guess whenever we're looking at radiographs and doing a post operative assessment, we're always wanting to look at um, and assess the four A's of um, fracture assessment. So let's try and get myself out of that view there. That's not the best image. Four A's of fracture assessment. So what we're looking at is um, alignment, apposition, apparatus, and activity. So we, when we're looking at alignment, what we're talking about is looking at the joints above and below the fracture. And so in this case, it's going to be hard for us to um, have inaccurate alignment, providing that the apposition and that reduction is actually good. So I'm not too worried about the alignment aspects um, because I know everything's going to line up because our apposition is good. So the apposition, we're looking at the apposition between the bone ends, between the epicondylar segment here. And then when we look on the um, AP section, um, this is really what we um, are looking at here. So I'm just going to again try and adjust the imaging on that. Now you'll notice here when we're looking at our apparatus, there's a couple of things I'm interested in. So when we look at this screw, I'm worried that this screw is actually a little bit too short. And so in surgery, I measured this as a 30 millimeter screw. And when I put the screw in, I had my finger sitting over this medial epicondyle and I actually couldn't feel the screw um, as I was tightening it up. And so I was wondering whether it might be a little bit short. Um, and so when we've actually looked at that um, on the post-operative x-rays, we can see that that screw is a little bit too short. Now, you could argue that you could possibly get away with that, but I wasn't too happy to leave. This is a very active young dog, and I'm worried about the ability of the owners to keep this dog adequately contained afterwards. So what we've done is actually to go back into surgery and place a longer screw. The other thing I'm looking at here is my um, anti-rotational pin that's going up through the epicondylar crest. And, you know, you could argue that that could be a little bit bigger. And I was chatting with intern, our intern uh, Ewan and, and discussing whether we make that a, a little bit larger or not. And I elected not to do that um, because I was worried about potentially trying to reintroduce a bigger pin and, and then having complications and upsetting my reduction. So um, we decided not to do that. So this is the post of x-rays from the... Um, from the second surgery where we've just literally gone in and replaced the screw, put a longer screw in. And then this is what the post-operative x-rays look like um, on this shot here. So again, looking at the four A's of um, the fracture assessment, we're looking at alignment. Um, again, alignment of the joints above and below is going to be um, something we don't need to worry about too much because we've still got this um, condyle intact on the, the medial side. Um, and knowing that we've got our um, apposition um, appropriate with our um, epicondylar crest and, and this condylar segment down here, I know that the alignment's going to be appropriate. So the apposition is important. We're looking to make sure that we've got everything well reduced and that we've got good bone contact. The apparatus, again, we're now looking at this thinking, okay, this screw looks like in its appropriate length. Um, it's in, engaging this uh, medial cortex nicely. Um, and I'm really glad I put that in when I was actually driving that screw and I could feel it engaging to that medial cortex really well. Um, activity, this is really something we're looking at for post-operative x-rays. So in this case, obviously, it's an um, immediate post-op x-ray, so there's not going to be any bone activity. It didn't take that long to do the surgery, so there shouldn't be any bone healing that's already taken place. So hopefully that was interesting and helpful for you. Check out the video that we put up, um, the live stream surgery, and if you have any questions, feel free to shout out. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day.